All right, Jack from Mega Electric here. Just wanted to go through some of the gear that I used on our new album, Full Throttle. Um, so we're gonna be talking guitars right now. I had some people ask in particular about the guitar tones, so I thought I'd go through that. Um, the main guitar I used on the album is probably this guy, which is a uh, Gibson SG Gold Standard, they called it, from about, I'll say 2015. It's basically the same thing as a regular Gibson SG standard, except it comes with gold hardware and it's got locking tuners here too. Helps it stay in tune a little better. So usually what I did was I put this guy straight into my Marshall here. Um, and I would pan it to one side with just the volume turned up loud enough on here that I would get some natural distortion from the amp. Um, and then I would take another guitar and record it through a slightly different signal chain and pan it to the other side. So here it is, the other one I generally used. Uh, it's a Sir Modern Satin, really nice guitar, and it's a different scale length, so you don't have to worry as much about phase issues and that sort of thing. So usually what I would do is pan that guitar, the SG to one side, and then I would have this guitar running through some sort of fuzz pedal through the Marshall still, but before it's going through the Marshall, it would go through usually this guy here, which is a Ron Swanson Super Fuzz pedal by Idiot Box Effects. So you get like a really nasty kind of blown out sound with that pedal. And then you get a cleaner sound from the Marshall also at the same time. So you get the, kind of the bigness and the clarity at the same time. So that's the basic idea there. Um, and what I would do is I would have the guitar plugged directly into this, which is a Frampton amp switcher. And this splits the signal. One side would go into the amp head. The other side would go directly into my computer interface in case we wanted to like preamp or add any plugins or anything. And it does sound to me like the uh, mix engineer we hired named Dave Tayo, who did a really killer job on the album, sounds to me like he did use some plugins on some of the tunes, like in addition to the guitar tones that I sent him. So I'd send him sounds through the Marshall here, as I said, and then also I would send him guitar tracks just straight into my interface in case he wanted to do his, his own guitar tones later on. Um, and fun little fact here, this box signed by Mr. Peter Frampton. I don't know when that happened. I got this used on reverb, but that's kind of cool. Um, what I often did too was put on yet another guitar on the choruses of the songs. Um, going through this guy, the Electro Harmonix Pitchfork. And this also, again, was going into the Marshall. Uh, this adds usually like an octave up effect. You can hear it in particular nice and loud in the mix on the end of uh, Mean Machine. But yeah, it really makes the choruses of the song pop or like the bridge if you want to like add some extra, you know, oomph to it. I would uh, run the guitar through that guy. So it's the Electro Harmonics Pitchfork pedal. Um, on one occasion, I also used this guy, Big Muff pedal. Uh, I think I used it on the verse of Mean Machine, where you get the guitar tone of one of the guitars just straight into the Marshall, pan one side, and pan to the other side is this guy. And uh, same concept as with the Ron Swanson Super Fuzz. You get the kind of clarity, like ACDC style crunch of the Marshall, and then you get the big, like nasty blown out sound of going through that guy. It's worth saying, um, I live in an apartment here in Brooklyn and I share walls with my landlord. She's a wonderful lady. So what I do is I run the Marshall amp head into the Sur Reactive load. So I'm really recording it direct, not with a speaker cab, because this would be insanely loud with a speaker cab. And uh, I'd probably get kicked out of my apartment. So this allows me to record direct, you know, potentially even silently with headphones or something like that. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Um, towards the end of the recording of the album, I got this here, which is a Rickenbacker 12 string. 
I forget which model it is. It's like a 33012 or 34012, something like that. Um, but you can hear this in particular on To the Boneyard. Um, when the bass guitar is playing a melody, you can like really hear this guy nice and loud. But this really helps like choruses of songs pop or like um, a bridge of a song really pop because it's got a ton of high end and it's got the doubled string so you get that cool chorusy effect. Um, ended up being really, really useful. I love this guitar, really nice instrument. And beyond that, um, the strings I use are these Elixir nine gauge strings, nine through 42. Uh, they're really great because they're coated and I burn through strings really quickly. If I don't use those, and as far as picks, I, let's see, I got some here. I generally use these Dunlop Mediums. They're great, easy to buy, and uh, yeah, I've been using these forever. Okay, well I think that pretty much covers it. Um, thanks so much for uh, checking out the video, and again, uh, if you haven't checked it out, our new album is called Full Throttle. Um, spent probably a year total working on it, worked really hard, so, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. So, uh, yeah, re recorded everything in here, except for the drums, self-produced. Um, we did Scott's bass in here too. So yeah, guitar, bass, vocals, some keyboards, and, uh, I got a little Pro Tools set up in here that, uh, we used, used to record everything except the drums. Uh, once again, it was mixed by Dave Tayo, who's based in upstate New York, not too, too far from here. Um, and he did a really killer job mixing it, you know, giving the drums some more punch and really happy with that. All right. Thanks so much, guys.